Hey there everybody, this is Quan, and welcome to video 4 of my XCOM 2 modding tutorial. Stealing other people's code, aka how to learn from other people's mods. Also, step boosts for weapons. In this mod, we're going to learn how to import other people's mods into ModBuddy for the purposes of looking at how they did things, and additionally, use one of those mods to improve the double barrel shotgun that we've been creating together. The mod we're going to be looking at today is the Long War Studios SMG Pack, and I will put a link in the description for them. This Steam Workshop mod will be downloaded automatically when you subscribe to the Steam Apps Workshop Content 268500, which is the ID for the XCOM 2 game, 577 etc. And that is the ID of the mod, and that will be downloaded here. You can see it contains config content, localization script, and SRC. Basically all the files you need to actually make the long warm SMG pack mod. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new mod. New project, default mod, it's going to have the same name, whoop, where'd you go, there you go. Going to have the same name as the XCOM mod file. So SMG pack, SMG pack, you want to create a default mod, not an empty mod, because you want the sold, uh, folder structure that they create. And you're going to go ahead and make this, uh, the title the same and the description whatever you want, because you're not uploading this. If you upload it, that's stealing, and that's stupid, and you should die in a fire, and die in a cloud, die in a cloud-based fire, and die in a fiery cloud. Now, we have the XCOM game folder. Delete that. Nobody needs that. Nobody ever needs that. If you need that, you're lying. Go ahead and take the folder in the Steam Apps Workshop folder for the Long War SMG pack and copy the entire thing. Then refresh. Look for L Long War SMG pack, the one we just created. And this is in the uh, My Documents for Access Mod Buddy XCOM folder. You'll find all of your projects listed there. And then we have the LW underscore SMG pack, SMG pack. You can see our config localization source, which matches up to what we have over here. It also says content, but that hasn't been created yet because there's nothing in there. So what we're going to do is paste. Copy and replace. Go ahead and copy and replace all things. Merge all folders, allow everything. And now all of these files have been added. You'll get a pop-up in your mod buddy saying, this item has been modified outside the source editor. Do you want to reload it? And you want to say yes, because that loads the changed one that you copied over. You can see this readme is the new one. Now what we're going to do is go folder by folder, adding existing items that are in those folders. So we have here the LWSMG pack and the strategy tuning in the content. We have all of these UPK files that did out the models and sounds and animations and stuff. In the localization, we have... What do we have in the localization? We have translations. Eh, not too important. I don't care too much about that. If you want to add the translations, you can just create a subfolder called translations and then add it there. And this is why you maintain the folder structure, because it will not let you create a folder that's already there. You'll have to change the folder name, and then put your folder there, and then change it back, or move all the files over. Really annoying, just use their folder structure. Now in the source LWSMG pack classes, go ahead and add existing item, and then go over to where their SRC is, classes, all of these classes. You'll see we have two downloadable content infos. Theirs has stuff in it, ours doesn't. Looks like they named their uh, the title of their mod differently. And that's okay, we're just going to go ahead and delete ours and use theirs instead. And that's just fine. And now you've done it. You've imported their entire mod into ModBuddy. You can go ahead and look through all their codes, see how they updated your storage to include the new items when you loaded the save game for the first time. See how they did the schematics, Do you see how they did the weapons. And we'll look at all of this in due time. Because I want my weapon to be a complete weapon, just like theirs are. For now though, what we want to do is add a stat change 
to the double barrel shotgun. Specifically, we want two more mobility, and that is because this shotgun sucks at range and our soldiers have trouble getting close. So we're going to make them a little bit faster when carrying this weapon. Now how do we do that, you ask? Well, I'm assuming that Longwear SMG Pack did something with mobility, since the SMGs give you plus three mobility when you equip them. So we're going to control shift f mobility. And there's a bunch of things. Uh, INI file seems to have references to mobility. The localization file has a bunch of references to it. And then x2 ability underscore SMG abilities. We see here mobility bonus. This must be where the mobility bonus is actually created. And we see below, add SMG conventional magnetic and beam bonus ability. So it looks like stat bonuses are handled as an ability. So if we want stat bonuses, we have to create an ability class. Let's go ahead and do that. Classes, add new item. And we'll go ahead and call it x2 ability underscore double barrel shotgun dot uc. And we're going to add the class declaration, which we'll just go ahead and steal theirs because there's no sense rewriting the wheel. And we're going to call it double barrel shotgun extends x2 ability config. And we're using xcom double barrel shotgun. I'll just type that. Usually copy and paste is better, but I trust my ability to type for once. So cool, we have the ability class declaration. So what do abilities need? They'll need var config amounts. And this seems to add both a mobility bonus and a detection radius. We don't care about the detection radius, we just want the mobility. So we're going to call it uh, double barrel underscore mobility underscore bonus. Now, before I continue, I'm going to make absolutely sure that this is correctly linked. And remember, just like last time, you have to go into your INI file. You have to create a category for the class you just created. So the last one we made was package name dot class name. Package name is double barrel shotgun dot. And then the class name is our new class x2 ability. Yeah, I can't type it. I'm just going to copy and paste it. So rename, copy, paste. There. Now I know that's correct because I pasted it. And the var config int we were using was a double barrel mobility bonus. And that's a mobility bonus of, let's say, 99, because that's balanced. OK, so now we have the ability bonus. I don't care about that. And you can see they have an x2 data template create templates. Now, just like weapons, you have to create an array of templates in a create templates function, you have to create, uh, define the array, and then you have to add your abilities, in this case, to the array, and then return the array. So just like weapons, you're creating this and returning it. Abilities, you create it and return it. So let's go ahead and just quickly do that to make sure we have all of our bookkeeping in the way. Static. What are we missing? Yes, static function array x2 data template, create templates. I could have just copied and pasted that over, but I wanted to write it for emphasis. So local array x2 data template templates, and then return templates. See, stealing code is fun and useful. We'll stop calling it ste stealing. Let's call it uh, reappropriating. OK, so they decided to call their stat bonus ability SMG conventional whatever. We're going to call it uh, double barrel underscore stat underscore bonus. Use underscores? No, nah, no underscore. Double barrel stat bonus. I'd like to stick with the naming conventions that Firaxis uses. So if their functions don't have underscores, don't use underscores in yours. Now we need to actually create the ability. Static function x2 ability template. Add SMG conventional bonus ability. So static function x2 ability template. This is of the type x2 ability template. And then the name of our function. And this is of the type x2 ability template, which we have not seen before. So let's go ahead and look that up. x2 ability template. 
What do abilities have? They have hostilities, which is whether the ability is an offensive, defensive, neutral, or movement ability. Uh, concealment rule for when it, what it does to your concealment, whether you retain it or lose it. Break camera framing, which I'm not too certain what that does. UI ability stat markup, which is how it is displayed in game. And then a million billion modifiers, such as ability charges, cost, cooldown, two hit calculation that it uses, shooter condition, target condition, which is conditionals, target effects, shooter effects, what it does to the target, what it does to the, the person using the ability, how it targets things, uh, what triggers it, allowing various bonuses, all sorts of stuff, just tons of stuff. Abilities can do tons of stuff. This class is super comprehensive. Feel free to look through it. You might learn a lot about it, but if you just want to figure out how to do your ability, look at how other abilities did it and use those parts. Because there is a lot in here. Like, this is hundreds and hundreds of lines of code. So instead of looking through all that, we're just going to look at how they did it, which is they created an ability template and then an effect persistent stat change. What's in a persistent stat change? X2 effect. Do they have a persistent stat change? Ah, they do. Looks like it's a stat change that just adds a stat type and a stat amount, and then a mod operator to say whether you're adding or subtracting from it. And then when it's added, it just updates the unit's game state, effect state with the new stat changes. Really straightforward. We can easily do that. Now, this uses the uh, mark create x2 ability template and this creates the proper ability template just like weapons only instead of an x2 weapon template it's an ability template and this is the identifier for this ability and this is double barrel stat bonus we'll just go ahead and use the same name this actually creates the ability We'll go ahead and copy and paste the declarations, because those are super important. Now, there's a bunch of bookkeeping that it does. And I'll quickly go over all of this bookkeeping stuff, because it's mandatory even for abilities that don't display. If you don't put these in, you will get red screen errors. You need an icon image, which they just use nanofiber vest, question mark, I guess. And they were like, replace this SMG by this icon, HP icon? It doesn't matter, because this never shows up. You'll never see the icon. Name the ability source, which this is being sourced from an item. The ability icon behavior, which is never show, which is why this icon's goofy. Hostility neutral. And you might say, wait, shouldn't it be in a hostility movement? And no, because all passives are neutral. Mo movement abilities activate when you move or when other things move. And this just activates like before the battle even begins, because it's just a passive, so don't set it to movement, just set it e hostility neutral. Display in UI tactical text? Nope, we don't want to fill our tactical view with all of the passives that we have. That'd just be silly. Now, template ability to hit calc equals default dot dead eye. This says that this ability will always apply. And now, let me explain a little bit about how this ability really works, and how all abilities work. Every passive in the game, whether it's a stat boost from a weapon, or a class passive, must be cast at some time. Abilities must activate at some time. And when they activate, they have a target and they have a source. And whether or not they hit has to be determined, so all abilities have an ability to hit. And that is the likelihood of them hitting. And default.deadeye is for access slang for all the time, or 100% chance. If you want something to always happen, use default.deadeye. And this is not to be confused with the uh, sniper deadeye ability. This is a separate variable, which is very specifically defined as 100% and never changes. So all abilities must be cast at some time. This says that the ability always hits. 
If you wanted a passive that only worked half the time, you'd set it to like 50% or something, and that'd be really funny. And I could think of some ideas behind passives that only proc sometimes. And then this target style is default.selfTarget, so the thing that's casting it targets itself, which makes sense because person holding the gun triggers the ability, and then the ability activates on the person triggering it. The person holding the gun activates it on themselves. That makes sense. And then ability triggers add item default dot unit post begin play trigger. This is when does the ability actually activate? And it activates at post begin play trigger, which is when the unit enters play. When the unit is created, instantiated, and exists. So in a standard game, this is when your soldiers land. And they're just like, yeah, we're units, we have a stat bonus. It just adds that in right then. So all of that's well and good. But this ability doesn't actually do anything yet. It just triggers at a certain time. In order to make it actually do anything, we have to add the persistent stat change effect, which will be a new class X2 persistent stat change. And we're going to go ahead and just loot basically this entire chunk as well, because there's no sense rewriting the wheel. And we can see this function, build persistent effect. And this was not in the persistent stat change effect. So that means that it may actually be a class in X2 effect modify stats. So let's go to X2 effect modify stats. Does that have it? Uh, build? Nope, doesn't have it. Uh, let's go to its parent, which is X2 effect persistent. Persistent. Does this have, does this have the build? And it does. Simulated function build persistent effect. Now just to explain real quick what I did. A class that extends another class steals all of the functions from the class it's extending unless it writes its own. So that means all classes that are extending something else can use any of the functions from its parent. And so this is the build persistent effect. And function and this is mandatory for persistent effects. It tells the game how many turns, whether it's an infinite duration, whether to remove it when the source dies, like when you kill a sectoid, then you remove it, and whether or not to ch ignore the player check on tick, which is to check every time the player is looked at whether or not the ability should be updated, like should it be removed after a certain point or is there a thing you can do to get rid of it. And then game rule state change underscore watch rule I'm not too sure what that does. It might be something about like observation or watching it for when it can change, but I'm not absolutely sure. Now, we can just see that this is how it's defined, and we know how this function works then. This function is saying that this effect will last for one turn, which we will promptly ignore by making it last forever, that it will not be removed when you kill the unit casting it, which is the person who has it, and that we will not check this unit on tick update, which means that this unit won't constantly be checked to see if this ability is still valid, because it's going to be all, always passive, uh, always valid, because it's a passive. And now we're going to set the display info for this, and we're going to set it as if it's a passive. And there would be localization strings here that you would use, we can actually look at the set display info. What is it calling for? Uh, looks like a string name, a string description, icon label, all, all that stuff. And the string name and uh, label is, or description is just empty because this will never be shown to the player. Icon image is there, but it doesn't matter too much. Ability source name, it's from an item, sort of important. And the false refers specifically whether to display in the UI, which is false. So don't do that. So it's all silly. And now we actually have created the persistent stat change. But it still doesn't do anything. We actually have to add the persistent stat change to the persistent stat change effect. We're going to add a mobility modifier of the amount default underscore double barrel mobility bonus. And that will pull from the config, which will pull from the I and I. So this has actually created the stat bonus.
And is that all Long War Studios did? Nope, they did a couple other things. And that is add target effect and build new game state. Add target effect. So this persistent stat change exists, and it is something we can now use at this point. Everything above this line. We have created the persistent stat change, and we can use it, but it's not actually being used. In order to use it, we have to add to the ability template a target effect, which is the effect that this ability will have on the target, which as we said here will be the self. And that effect will be this persistent stat change that we just created. So we add that into the ability and cool. Now when the ability hits the target, it will give them a stat boost. And that will happen at the beginning of the mission. And that's all well and good. At this point we can create the new game state function, which is how this ability will affect the game state and it creates a new one in response to being triggered. And all abilities will have basically this line, build new game state function equal typical ability underscore build game state. And then you return the template to be picked up by the array, template array to be picked up by the template manager. We are actually done creating this ability. I'm going to go ahead and debug because I probably made thousands of errors. And while we debug, I just want to talk about this ability and how it exists and it can be used. This ability can be used, but it's not being used. But we know how to make weapons use abilities. Template abilities add item. Template.abilities.add item. And then what was the name of the ability? Double barrel stat bonus. We don't even need to look at how Long War Studios did this. We learned how to do this last video. See? Bam. We got that in. And we can actually check Long War Studios since this has taken a while to build. Let's go ahead and look at how they did it in their weapon. So you can see their weapons have the stat bonuses, the weapon damage value, a few other things we haven't gotten into yet, such as the bonuses for the modules. And you can see right here, yep, abilities.addItem, SMG, CV, stat bonus. And they also have another line that we're going to quickly steal. So let me go ahead and paste that down here. I'm going to go ahead and move this right next to it so that you can see how they're together. Now, remember when we saw set UI stat markup? This is what actually displays the bonus when you equip the item. It'll display the plus whatever to the right of it. The effect will occur, but will not be shown to you until you go into mission unless you include this item. And this UI stat markup will pull from the localized data .mobility label, labeling it as a uh, mobility modifier, so it'll put it in the right part of the screen. And this will tell it that it is modifying the mobility of the soldier. And then this will tell us how much it's modifying it by, which is class x2 ability underscore smg abilities dot default dot smg and what that's doing is that's pulling from the class we've created this config amount so we're going to go ahead and replace that with our own class that we've used and our own holy shit that built the first time oh my god and our own mobility bonus so now we have added the ability to the weapon. We have told strategic level what this ability does, which is modifies mobility by the mobility bonus. Now, our mobility bonus is 99, so this is going to be fun. Let's go ahead and hit debug, see if we can look at how it looks in game. And if this does not work, I apologize. I actually failed many times include the proper category and the proper local or the proper config file call in my ability and if you fail to pull the proper config file it'll just not know what the number is and assume it's zero so we can include the SMG pack just to compare we'll include the double barrel shotgun and I'm gonna show you how to debug in the strategic mode uh, uh, it's been about 25 minutes with you guys, and it has been lovely. 
So as we're loading up, I just want to say, what do you want me to show off in the next few videos? I'm going to be showing tech levels, schematics, and start to get into the models a little bit, but I'm not very good at the models yet. So just tell me what you want me to show in regards to weapons, or even like abilities that weapons use. So now we're going to the strategy menu in the debug. We're going to click debug strategy start. That's going to play the intro video, which I'm going to promptly ignore. If you mash spacebar, it'll sometimes skip it. It's been inconsistent for me, but I'm going to mash spacebar. Mash, 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 mash. Mash, mash, mash. No, it's not skipping. Uh, whatever. Don't care about them anyway. So... Let me alt tab. Head back in. Come on, skip video, please. No. Oh. Sometimes it'll skip it, sometimes it doesn't. It's inconsistent. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But while this is playing... Oh, not, uh, now it skips it. Uh, it always gives me a red screen at the beginning. Yeah, you can just ignore that, it's not related to your mod, unless it says it is. So now we are in the debug strategic menu. You can see thousand, 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 four thousand. We're giving infinite everything in one of every building, basically. And we can go into our armory. I accidentally selected the Scilab. We can go to, into our armory, click View Soldiers. We're given one of every soldier type and a million rookies. Double barrel shotgun is a ranger weapon, of course. We can go ahead and select the double barrel shotgun. You can see here, plus 99 mobility. So we know that it works, or at least that it says it works. In order to figure out if it actually works, we're going to have to test it in game. And you know what? We can actually do that from the de debug strategy menu. We just have to be spend a bit of time doing it. And feel free to skip ahead to when I actually get into a mission. But I just want to talk a little bit about what tutorials you want me to do. Like, yeah, all of the stuff I've done so far is related to this weapon, but I am working on other abilities, like Psy abilities. And I can talk about how... I did all these localization changes, and I'm completely willing to learn new systems if you want me to talk about them, because there's a lot I don't know, and there's a lot even I'm still like trying to learn. And additionally, remember always to complain about any mistakes I make and anything that I didn't cover correctly, just tell me everything I did wrong. So here we have our squatty with our double barrel shotgun. A bunch of people have all their stuff. Yeah, that's cool. I gave them all funny names. And now they're going to go into the mission and we're going to see if this mobility boost actually works. And the frame rate's horrible because XCOM 2 is a greedy, greedy hog of all my resources. Ooh, a little bit tired. It's like... 1 a.m. when I'm recording this. Mm -hmm. What do I even talk about? I don't even know what to talk about. Like, my day's been eventful. I had an eventful day. I don't want to talk about it. I could talk about it, just not in a video. It's very eventful. I'm repeating myself. That's awkward. Why am I awkward? I mean, how do you fill time? Like, do you just talk about random things? Oh, yeah. What I could talk about is just like. Uh, a good book I read. I read Journey to the West. It's about Wukong. Oh my god, Dragon Ball Z equals Journey to the West. Fucking, wow, these loading times are long. Is it just me that has, like, fucking 35 second loading times? Like, seriously. Like, as much as I like this intro, it's just, it takes forever to load in. Like, 30 seconds sometimes, and then it finally loads it. Anyway... Thank you for bearing with me while I rambled about literally nothing for like three minutes. Now we're in, it says metal destroyed chunks is part of the cooking process. That's not related to our mod, you can just ignore that. So mobility bonus. We can move anywhere! Oh my god, we can move anywhere. So yeah, just fucking, and you can see. I've given us a mobility bonus of literally retarded amount. So they just run and run and frames skip and they scout the target. And... 
Yeah, yeah, we have positive fucking... No. Real bullshit. And there's enemies. And they spotted me and revealed, I don't care, I'm just running past you. Do do do. Running around at the speed of frame skip. Tech do it. Okay. None of this matters anymore. We're going to go ahead and close this because we know at this point that it works. That's all that really matters. That it works. I'm going to go ahead and set this to 2 instead of 99 because 99 is a little bit over, just a tiny bit overpowered. Who's much more balanced? So in this video, we have created a stat bonus and we have tested it in strategic and we have seen how to look at other people's mods and how other people have done things. Next time on Quan's video tutorial mod part 5, I'm going to go ahead and work on this weapon some more. I'll probably create some tech levels and sc some schematics. We'll go ahead and create a magnetic and beam shotgun. As always, leave your comments, like pfft, Game Grumps, like, comment, and subscribe. Nah. I'll uh, bitch about anything I did wrong, tell me what I did right, and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.